All right, Laura, so who are we calling today? Tiffany. Tiffany, your daughter, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. How old is she now? 14. 14, oh wow. How's she doing? Well, that's what I'm getting ready to find out, but as far as I know, she's doing pretty good. Okay, let's call in. Hello? Tiffany? Hi, it's Mom. I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Good. So how's your first year of high school? Oh, that's wonderful. I love you too. I miss you so much. Oh, you sound so grown up. I know, you are grown up. <laughs> When we go in and do orientation, you almost can touch the sorrow and the, the despair that's there. And so then you start offering possibilities of programs and ways, avenues for them maybe they can walk or try that they've never been before. And you, you, you just give it, you leave it, and you hope then that other inmates, other women in there who have gone that way, will then inspire them to try it. So how are we doing on this art? How's it feeling? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty good. Relaxing. It's relaxing, yeah. yeah. Woman by woman, or sometimes you'll see it in a group where when they're doing a parenting class or they're talking about something about foster care, that the spark happens within one woman's eyes or in her heart and she's able to verbalize possibilities for herself where maybe before it was really a negative and a dark shadow. She lived in a dark shadow time. And once that happens either individually in a group then you have others to kind of support you along with it. And they're part of the transformation. I don't believe any of us are transformed alone. You know, we're all in a communal part of life, no matter where we are. And when you listen to women's stories, the th common thread is there is an isolation about their lives and a desperation. And nobody really cared about them. That's a very common factor when you listen to people's stories. And all of a sudden, when you come into a community of people where you start to feel, you know, your story has value. Your story has credibility, and I want to hear your story. And I want to help you move beyond the negative part of your story so that there is a positive. There is a sense of life and joy in life that you deserve as well as anybody else. Not just because you were brought up in those circumstances or you chose the streets as opposed to education or for whatever reason happens that there is possibility but that can only start to happen within the communal part of it because they all of a sudden feel maybe this can work for me maybe my story has validity and I can move from the shadows into a life. The day that I got arrested um, when I was doing my physical to go into county jail is when I found out I was pregnant with my daughter. In the beginning, I had no plan on keeping my daughter. Um, I was 19. It was my first time ever being in trouble with the, the justice system. Like, I didn't know how to deal with it. And when I heard them trying to give me prison time, state time, that's when the reality hit, like how serious and how deep in the hole I was. When I got to Bedford, I was nine months, <laughs> and everyone was freaking out when I got there because I was basically ready to give birth. So um, I was grateful enough that they accepted me on the nursery right away. We always used to go to the, the playroom area and like play music, play games, talk, laugh, we'll make food. Every time I felt like I was gonna explode, I just went running. Like, I need a moment because at a snap of a finger, anything, they will remove your baby from the nursery, send your kid home to whatever family member. So I'll just sit in my room and play with my daughter. Like, <laughs> that was my friend, that was my buddy. We used to listen to music and I used to like move her around like she was dancing and stuff. That used to make me laugh, so that kept me at peace. I've been living here since I was eight. I'm not a citizen, but I'm a legal resident. So because my crime was considered so severe, they had to take actions into trying to deport me. And that meant another separation from my daughter. Once I was released, I was handed over to immigration and I had to send my daughter home to my mom because I was being removed from Bedford and placed in another correctional facility. 
And that was a really hard time for being with my daughter for so long and then having her ripped out my hand, having her go home to my mom and me having to start all over again in a new facility, that's when I really broke. I seen my mom at least two times out of that seven months of me being there fighting this immigration case. So the only thing that I was able to do is make phone calls and hear my baby on the phone and you know, hear her start talking and my mom like, oh, she started walking today. Like a lot of that stuff hurt. A lot of it hurt, and altogether, I was incarcerated for two years. I won my case May 2011. I came home, and I don't have no regret on it because it made me who I am today, and I'm very proud of who I am today, who, I, where I'm standing, where I'm going. Like I'm very proud of that. I love the fact that my women want their stories to be told because they're proud of who, who they've become. And they really have learned not to just dwell in the past. And they can walk these streets proud. How's that taste? Huh? How's that taste for you? You're so funny. You're so funny. You're so funny. <laughs> Whoa, what do you got? I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> listen and you're present to them in their own pain so that you they you give credibility to it and a witness that their pain is real and there is a way of dealing with it with the hope of rising above it and into a future where it's a little less painful and maybe joyful I'd like to think that but it is it's being real about it not sugarcoating it or not oh it's too bad this didn't happen and when they're there on the nursery with that baby, they real, all of a sudden you see the light goes on that their role as mother is crucial to this child. And she has a lot to learn and she's in an incubator learning program where she can learn and take the time again to learn what, a, what it means to be and to bond. That word bond is such an important piece of what happens on that nursery. And you see it over and over again. Uh, the care that they have for the child's hair, the, ch the way the child looks, the clothes the child puts on, the way they bathe the baby. Um, it's, it's just a wonderful opportunity. So um, I believe the nursery should be and is a, just a life-changing experience. Hi, my little angels. This is Mommy. I'm going to read a book for you. It's called Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. We've watched the movie so many times, so I figured it would be cool if you have the book. So, we were all sitting around the kitchen table. It was Saturday morning, pancake morning. Whatever the weather served, that was what they ate. But it never rained, it never rained rain, it never snowed snow, and it never blew just wind. It rained things like soup and juice, it snowed mashed potatoes and green peas, and sometimes the wind blew in storms of hamburgers. Life for the townspeople was delicious until the weather took a turn for the worse. So mommy's gonna stop right here. I'm gonna let you finish the book. I'm going to send it to you, and then we can talk about it. I love you, and I can't wait to hear from you. Bye-bye. It's the reality of their life is where they are, and that's what they have to look at, what got them there, and more importantly, what can get them out of that pain, whether it is the physical relocation, getting out of Bedford, or getting out of prison and into a new life, or rebuilding a life from within, because many of them will have to do that. My women are proud to walk as part of our children uh, because they know who, who they become. And that's very evident when you walk these streets and you see the growth of our programs <laughs> and the housing and the, their involvement in the school system and the Girl Scouts and the Y and all those things. So that's the exciting part to see the growth and the um, potential of the women coming to fruition. I say the gift that they have is time. And once they realize that that time can lead them to transformation, they'll use that time. And each day is important. You know, they might have five, ten years, but if they can see each day as another stepping stone into a future that they can be cre help create for themselves and their family, then they're using the gift of time. 
in not a negative way, but in a positive way. And um, I see that also outside here, the gift of time that we can take for granted because we can whip through a 24-7 day. Okay, okay, on to tomorrow. <laughs> and I almost forget, you know, that each, we have to live in the moment.